Yo, 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 it's Pie Sun Radio. You know what's going on. This is episode 67, and we back once again. What's been going on with us? Not too much. We still eating Salsitas Mexican food pretty much every other day for the most part. And when we want to get swole, we go to All In Strength and Fitness. That's on McDowell and Hayden at 1495 North Hayden Road, Scottsdale, Arizona. Go check them out. Holla at your man, KC. Tell them that the Pod Sun sent you. But we are back on Pod Sun Radio, man. It's episode 67. Very happy to be here. We got a very special guest. You know, we getting the vibes right today. And if y'all didn't know, y'all might not know because actually I'm a, a cactus kid. I, I bleed desert. You know, I, I'm very clean, but sometimes that dust come off me, you know, because I'm born straight from the desert. But I'm actually Bahamian, you feel me? So I'm really an islander. So it's, it's cool because I feel the island vibes on this episode. You know what I'm saying? 100% wholeheartedly. So we brought an artist in from a genre that we have not done before. This is the first uh, reggae artist. I mean, he's more than that, but I would say reggae is his definitely what he's dominating in. So this is our first reggae artist. Very happy to have him. We brought in my man, Yacopo. Did I pronounce that right? Uh, you got it. Yacopo is in the house, man. Thank uh, you for sitting yeah, down with us. How you doing? Doing good. How you enjoying Phoenix, man? Loving it, bro. We got out of the studio. Where we got? Where's that? Mesa? Salt Mine, yeah. Salt Mine Studio in Mesa. Shout out to Salt Mine. Damn, yeah. you came right down and did it big, man. Salt Mine, that's one of the, that's the, the mecca pretty much. You know what I mean? I think Lil Wayne recorded a lollipop in there, some of that card and stuff. So you're doing the right thing, man. Come do something at Marmara too, though. But, uh, you know, hey, 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 Salt Mine the Hub, though. Shout out to y'all. But um, right. what's the first thing you did when you got to Phoenix? Um, got high, smoked some weed, My and man. uh, went to the studio, started recording. Real, hey, that's a real dude, real nigga moves right there. Tell me this, what was your uh, because you know, I'm an avid smoker, you know, shout out to all the dispensaries in Arizona. We only medicinal, yeah, we haven't crossed over the recreational path, but it's soon come, shout out. soon come, you know what I'm saying? Right. But, um, what was what you think about the Arizona weed so far, bro? <laughs> man, I got I, I took a couple of hits off. And I was like, how the fuck, I couldn't even function. It took me like a day to recover and then. Took over yeah. your motor skills. Yeah, yeah, bro. I was uh, very impressed. So. Man, that's a good Shine yeah. moment for Arizona. And before I go, Man. let me tell you what a shine moment uh, is. Because you're probably going to run a lot of shine moments. A shine moment is pretty much when you do something that either we haven't done or that we're impressed by. Or like you said, Arizona had the good weed. So that's a shine moment for us as a state. Because we're happy to hear that. So, shine moment for Arizona. All we smokers worldwide, bow your head right now and say, uh, amen to Bob Marley. But, um, amen. <laughs> all right. So, what I do want to know is because, you know, I always do my history, I always like to research, but it's some stuff you can't find on the internet. You feel me? And a lot of that stuff is most of the real life uh, components that typically make up the character of a of an individual, I say. So we like to start at the beginning, my man. So before we go to the music, let's kind of get to unwind your story. So where are you born and raised at? I was born in Orange County, California, and I grew up in the islands in Samoa, South Pacific. Okay, yeah, born in the so OC. Started, yeah. And then what's it like? Okay, so you born in OC, but really you're an islander. You know what I'm saying? So mm -hmm. talk to us about growing up in the Samoas from your childhood. Anything that you remember, funny stories, yeah. crazy, um yeah well in high school i started singing in the, in the club so like you know in the in high school yeah in the samoas and they and they all big as hell over there so you you had, I, I know they tried oh, to test yeah. your gangster at some point oh yeah you know there's stories that i will never tell but hopefully like when they make a movie about me, they could show, you know yes yeah. i just i'm gonna i'm gonna let the movie tell it yeah nah please if you can make it in the samoas you can make it any goddamn where. You know, I remember my uh my step pops. Well, actually, this wasn't even. Sorry, bro. bro, he yeah. said, "You get into it with drunk Samoan, please." Yo, tear your ass up. <laughs> but um, all right. So um, did you go? So you went to high school out there? Did you graduate out there? I did. I actually um, I had to do my uh senior year twice. Okay. What was life like upon graduation for you? And you're already singing in the clubs. Were you? Did you already establish a music career like as you were graduating high school? Yeah, so when I was going to high school, like, you know, at lunchtime, we would, like, be on the lunch table and, like, make a beat and, like, freestyle and shit. Mm -hmm. And, like, one of the, my homies that we used to freestyle with, 
he was like, hey, you know, um, my uncle is like the leader of this band mm-hmm. you know, that performs at this popular nightclub. So he said, you should come down with me. Mm-hmm. And then um, I went down and then I ended up joining the band. First, he took me and got a tattoo. He's like, yeah. I got a present for you. And he took me down and he sat me on his mat and this, this uh, short, fat, like all tattooed up from head to toe, some more dude. Like, you know, no shirt, no shoes, just a lava lava. It's like, mm-hmm. cu- like, start like cussing at me and some more, and like, sit down. Like, like, basically, he's saying, like, white boy, sit down. Mm-hmm. Like, give me your, give me your arm. Like, move. He's like, he's like, give me, like, he's like, you know what I mean? He's cussing at me. I'm not gonna, yeah, he's like, yeah. give me your fucking arm, boy. Like, fucking, you know, he's so he I'm like, oh shit. Fucking he force the tattoo. tattoo me, like, form, like, I was like, okay. All right, and I didn't even know it wasn't mapped out. It wasn't decided on. He just started tattooing me. Wait, so you got tattoo raped as a child? We got to no, bring no, away. I mean, to you know, team. like I want. I he, I I realized it was a tattoo place, and I was like, okay, dope. Like my homie's gonna give me a tattoo. It's not like if I didn't want a tattoo, I would have left. But so it's like date it tattoo just, rape. Like, it was just. <laughs> <laughs> it was, yeah. So <laughs> anyway, he gave me a tattoo. I was like, okay, cool. You know, my first tattoo. I was like, man, I got a tattoo. Yeah, sorry, mama. That's all right. Started, shit. started joining the, uh, invited me to join the band. I started singing in the club. In the club. So like yeah. on the weekend, I, I would go and sing for a Friday, Saturday night in the club. I went to high school drinking, smoking, partying, you know, the girls yeah. and shit, having a great time. As a kid, like to me, that was like the dopest thing, right? Like. What do other kids they, they go home and they do their homework, and then they you know what I mean? What, like mm-hmm. for me, I was like always into the life and shit. Yeah, and it happened to be reggae music that was the kind of music like so they would play like the top forty music, but play it like reggae style. Mm-hmm. So oh yeah, I know what you mean. Yeah. Like mix it together and shit. Yeah, like just regular top forty sound, but just playing with the, the you know reggae sound. So that's how I got into got that. into it and um, stuff like that. Okay, all right, so. Since we're talking about like high school age right now or graduating, you'd have made it pretty big at this point. You know, you've accomplished a lot, a lot for sure, for sure. So, is there somebody, maybe like a high school sweetheart or something that you had back then, who's looking for you now? Um, I see him. I see him on my story. I see him on Facebook. I, I see a couple of them, mm-hmm. but um, yeah, I'm good. You good? Yeah. I'm good. <laughs> Man, I just come by okay, just I, to give the nah, give it and go. <laughs> no, nah, not like that. But you gotta get them know, back sometimes, man. No, nah, I, I I appreciate you. Like like mostly anybody that you know been important, like part of my life. Like even when we separate, we go, we always good. So that's nice. You know, I see you out there with with your your hubby and your four kids. And, like, and, you know, he work at Dunkin' Donuts. <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? saying? Like, I'm yeah. Good. Nah, you got to stunt on them sometimes, yeah. man. I, I'm just a little petty, you know. You hurt my feelings, I'm hurting yours, too. But uh, I don't care if we was 12. We got to figure this out. Okay. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Well, I feel you. I, you live and learn. It's all a blessing or a lesson, you know. Yeah, both. I like that, man. So we got that pimp, you got that pimp twang a little bit. But all right, so yeah, I just like to always know about that. And actually, one more question. You said you, I mean, I know you was in the drinking and smoking. Were you in the sports at all? Are you an athlete? Or anything like so that? I started... Um, I was always into music. Like my mother was a piano teacher, so mm-hmm. like I seen her shy and, moment. Um, and uh, I'm like, oh shy, shy. Uh, my mom was a piano teacher. I used to jump on the piano. Like after she would, after she would get off, get off, off the piano when she'd be done playing, I'd start working on stuff. And I got a guitar when I was young. So from the moment I got a guitar, I was like. Yeah, I'm a fucking rock star. Yeah. Fuck this shit. I, yeah. I, I, I ain't going that that plan that my that, you know I was hearing like this. This is the way it is. This is the way it's going down. I'm like, nope, no. Nope. Mm-hmm. Pretty much into it from a young age. Yeah, so I was, and actually, I got a question. This might, I guess, is kind of a little foreshadowing because we're going to talk about the shaggy thing, and I want to go in depth into that. But is that somebody who you were into, like, as a young? Because in obviously in the continental U.S., he had big songs, smash, smash, smash. But I know he has a catalog that's got to be super deep. Were you a big fan of Shaggy when you were young? I mean, it's some of his songs, you know? Like, mm-hmm. Yeah, some of his songs. My favorite from when I was young is, of course, Bob Marley and uh, UB40. Oh, Shine Moment, man. Yeah. Big but uh, 
Shaggy, yeah, like his songs like were dope. Like he's he he is a legend for sure. And um, as far as like bringing reggae music to like America, mm -hmm. there's really only so many artists that really do that in the last 20 years. If you look at from reggae, like from Bob Marley, you know, look at mm -hmm. the last 20 years, look at the last decade, like there's only like maybe two or three artists that really brought reggae to America. Mm -hmm. Like, cause they don't really support it the same way. Like they, mm -hmm. you know, they're not going to, you know, but it's one of the biggest genres. So, you yeah, know? absolutely. So like Sean Paul and Shaggy, like from this last decade, mm -hmm. the last 10 years in America is like really, you know, the two, two out of maybe three or four artists, in the, you know, that had mm -hmm. not ever, ever done it. And Shaggy was, um, man. Sh shout out Sean Paul. I think I got my first freak dance to Sean Paul in sixth grade, for sure. But um, <laughs> I did have a question though. Yeah. Um, all right, so coming back from high school, when, at what point do you come back to California? Or what, at what point do you come back to the continental US? Well, I just came back like a year ago. Oh. Uh, before working on the album. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, I did uh, fly back to Hawaii. My music was getting popular in Hawaii. Mm -hmm. And then um, Simon. that's how I ended up getting signed to Universal in Japan. Mm -hmm. um, Another shine moment, Jesus. <laughs> from hawaii yeah. to japan all right so yeah. what's uh you said your music was getting big in hawaii what was the reception like for you over there and like how was the like was just deals coming for you on the table in hawaii also and you said no i'm taking japan or was just like how did how no, did you go from hawaii um, to japan after that my music went like like number one on the radio in Shine hawaii on. and then we, we were getting tour for like tour offers in the islands a lot mm -hmm. we were doing that a lot hell yeah and, Okay. And so how much work have, would you say, have you done like really in America or is this like, no, we, um, so the album is done and starting this month, we start dropping, dropping songs. So okay. we've been waiting, we've been working on the, on the, you know, on the music for a minute and now we finally ready. Yeah. It's Sony now though, right? No. Um, I was working with Sony in Japan. No, okay. Yeah. Gotcha. Now I'm signed to a label out of LA called Island Empire. Okay, so what, how come you did, what went wrong with Sony? Or not went wrong, well, how come you don't want to, how come you're not working with Sony anymore? Um, well, I still, I have songs with them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But just, yeah. it, was it like a, like an album deal or? No, actually, the, um, I did five years, um, with uh, Universal and then Sony came in the picture doing, um, like, funding my tours. Gotcha. And then I ended up doing like three or four tracks with them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, and was the Sony relationship, or is it Universal? We don't. I'm gonna tell you this right now. We don't fact check on this station, so I don't know if Shaggy or Sony or Universal. But it was in one of those relationships that helped you get that song, the touchdown. No, no, no. no. It's really you know like like artists, you know, mm -hmm. like if they want to do it, you know. Yeah. Like the la the label doesn't really get involved in that. So mm -hmm. Actually, you know. Okay. All right. So now let's just go ahead and go into so when touchdown. Let's start from the creative process. So, is it a song that you wrote? Which one? Touchdown. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I wrote it in um, in Miami with Russian. He's mm -hmm. one of the biggest radio producers. In the world. Shine moment. Yeah. Big up Russian. Okay. And then, where did the inspiration come from? Was it like, yo, we just and he blew the fuck up. I don't know if you've seen him lately, but he got a song with Nicki Minaj. <sighs> um, that's Rick definitely Ross. a shine moment, shine moment. Uh, He's doing his thing. Just all in the last few months. Wow. Been, yeah. Wow. But yeah, we wrote the song in the studio, and then um, I was listening back, and I'm like, damn, I think uh, I think Shaggy would sound good on, on this. Mm -hmm. And then he, we sent it to him, and he liked it, so he just came down. And was that track the first big song for Russian? No, 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 no. no okay. He's, um, he's like the... Like one of the biggest, you know, okay, dancehall gotcha. producers. Yeah, and that's the like, sound so, now. Like this generation, I would say, like the hottest, without question, like, you know, uh, dancehall artist is mm -hmm. Vibes Cartel, you know? Mm -hmm. You know that? Yeah. yeah, yeah. But they got him locked up since 2012. So 
Bob, Bob's cartel has power, like maybe like like Bob Marley or even, mm-hmm. or even greater, like in Jamaica right now. That's big time yeah. moment because anything that like if he says something, so many people are behind him mm-hmm. that they'll do whatever yeah, he says. That's crazy. And they locked him up for a uh, murder that he didn't commit. They never found the body. But they just charged him for a murder and then um like five or seven what two twelve thirty four six seven eight six years later the guys like in canada on instagram like the same guy that they charged him murder for, for murder wow so it's a big conspiracy behind yeah. that man yeah man shit, i hope that get right man so russian was um his producer his favorite producer mm-hmm. and he's like the you know mm-hmm. the, the king of dance off Nah, that's big it's though, man. I mean, Beanie Man is like calls himself the king of dance hall, but <laughs> you know, yeah. like he, he didn't stay in yeah. respect to Beanie Man. Yeah, nah, shout out to Beanie Man. He's like the big, big, you know, like keys to the FEMA. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I met that dude, the dude, the Zim Zimma. Yeah, yeah, that's a real person. <laughs> that's crazy. That's a real person. He's like, yo, my name's Zimma. You know, he wrote the song. You know, that shit is crazy. He goes yeah. everywhere with him. Yo, I'm Zimma. Yeah, man. Hey. <laughs> Don't forget about him. <laughs> Shit, I feel him, all right. But no, I mean, it's a big, big, big record. So that's why I kind of want to go through it. Okay, so you write it. You say Shaggy sounds good getting on it. And then you guys just send it to him. He gets it. He just sends back the verse or he comes in. Shine on yeah. it. That's always the much better creative process than to send an MP3 file way to get the shit back. Like, And how was the uh, studio session like when you guys got in? It was dope. It was dope. He's very professional, good vibe, good energy, and then he freestyled the ending. Just wow, freestyled some shit, and it was, it was cool. Yeah, and then we we did everything off a of handshake. We didn't do like contract and that. Wow, like, that's big. That mean he really know? fucked with you, man. And, yeah, and then like the video we shot like two months later, even three months mm-hmm. later, and it, it was just all like on his word. Like, yeah, I'm gonna show up. Like, yeah, three he, months later, he showed up. On, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I'd have had a shaggy double on car. <laughs> but all right, um, he was like, "I sure I gotta wear these clothes." He was like, uh, "I don't know at first if he was feeling the the stylist outfit for me." He's like, "Fuck it, I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna we gonna rock it." Had him looking real young, gave him young dude fit. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think you could fit. <laughs> I'll, I'll all right, so <laughs> now you good. All right, so um, when you who shot the video? Um, actually, you know that's a good question. Um. Jesse Torero and Life Garland. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know about. Uh, you know, I know Jesse Torero, but talk yeah. to me about Life Garland. Yeah, they, uh, yeah. Jesse Torero, you know, he he did the Love the Way You Lie with mm-hmm. Lil Wayne and all this shit. So amazing. And Life Garland is like, do most of his work together with him. Mm-hmm. Um, he's done a lot. Like, I wouldn't even really be able to do him justice on all this stuff he's done. But yeah. he's amazing, you know? Okay, shine moment. All right, and then just a left field question, just podcast it. Do you have any kids? I do. Yeah, I just had a brand new baby girl. Shine moment, man. I got yeah. two baby girls, man. They're yeah. beautiful, man. They keep your head on straight. She's a year and a half now. They keep you at the strip club. Uh, I'm telling you the truth. <laughs> <laughs> All right, now we just always yeah. like to ask that just to get a touch of the personal. Yeah, field. yeah, yeah. I have a, a baby girl, a uh, year and a half old year old called. Uh, her name is Anika Nirvana. I'm on my baby. Yeah, yeah, man, do your thing, man. I'm telling you, it changed it change you right away, immediately. You're like, damn, I ain't even the same person. I don't, I don't even know that guy. But um, all right, so let's get back to it. So Puma, Puma's big, man. Puma's huge. So are you working with Puma already, or is it something that, is, that you might do? Um, I was uh, with Puma for five years. I'm not with them anymore. Okay, see, but we don't fact check. I love, I love Puma stuff. So they, it was when I got to Japan, they asked me what brand I want to work with. Mm-hmm. Puma was one of the brands. And actually, we ended up doing their first um, like reggae look. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we did it when I was with them. We created their reggae Puma look with the Jamaican colors. Yeah, shine on me, man. That's big. So you remember that, like. Five years, was it? 12, 13, like 2013. Did they use it in, or no, they Everything was they was doing. Um, Olympics and stuff? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. At the same time with the, um, yeah. 
Oh, man, Puma's huge, and I asked about them. I mean, because I want we we're gonna talk about them anyway. But um, the thing about Puma is I see them working with people like Meek Mill, even through his whole situation. You know, keep working with them. So I feel like they're a brand that's really trying to get ahead of the curve. You know, I'm not gonna say urban because I kind of hate that word. But I feel like they're trying to get ahead of the curve and really like embrace society and the young, you know, gener younger generation, you know. So that's big. Yeah, so the fashion, like sports and also fashion. Yeah, you know, and they're not cutting you as soon as something come out in the headlines like a Nike or, Re you know, mm -hmm. I ain't going to throw the brands out there, but you know what I'm saying. You know, uh, Puma and Adidas are brothers. That's, you know that's, that? that's probably a good thing. Well... <laughs> They're I mean, the big, big rivals, but they're brothers. I mean, I guess that's always how it works. But I mean, Kanye West got to be the looking bad. What you think about Kanye West, man? What do I think about me? Not. I, I mean, I love his music. He's a big fan, but I mean, what he's doing with Donald Trump. I don't know. You ain't seen him in the White House. Um, I haven't been watching that close. I'm kind of like just tapping into like the frequency. That yeah, I'm vibrating. No, that's right. It's bad energy. So, like, if you ain't vibrating on, yeah, I'm just like. Seeing everything around me. Yeah, see, that. you don't be on Facebook because you can't miss it if you get if you scroll down on Facebook. I mean, I've seen some shit, but to give me specific, give me something. Yes. Yeah. So I don't know what he was saying, but as a black dude, you know, somebody who got to you know face these problems that uh, they're talking about, just seeing him go in front of like all the cameras in the media, it's just for one, it seems like a big gimmick, you know, just for attention. But on top of that, he's uh, like one of the facing representatives almost for us you know and then it's just it's just sad to see but i mean going from george bush don't care about black people to whatever i don't know we ain't gonna right, go into right, that right. too much shout out yeah. to kanye whatever we'll get back on the uh on the joint all right so would you ever work with puma again if they um come yeah, back to the table yeah mm -hmm. they're dope my whole it got to a point where my whole entire like well, I have an apartment in, uh, in Tokyo. It's completely filled with Shy moment. nothing but Puma shit. I'm like, man, I got, I got to switch it up. Mm -hmm. Like everything I have is Puma. But yo, you all hear him shit on us real quick? He said, I got an apartment in Tokyo. That is shit. I don't care. That's that's enough right there. <laughs> What's Tokyo like, man? Tokyo. Be more specific. because. What's the weed in Tokyo like? They got bomb weed. They got really good weed, but yeah. it, it took me a little while to figure that out. Okay. Because I was pretty scared. Like, they had me like, Yo, <laughs> you're going to be like, don't oh, weed, weed, you know, smoke mm -hmm. weed, don't. Strict laws. You're going to lose your, your contract. You're going to go to, yeah. Like, yeah, strict. Damn. I actually got arrested in Tokyo two times. Damn. You want to talk about that shit? I mean, give it to me, man. Shit, I've been in jail yeah. <laughs> only for I a couple of nights. Two times in, in uh, uh, Okinawa, Japan, for like this much weed. And I'm like, yeah. But anyway, what's Tokyo you know, jail we like? <laughs> uh, they keep it's a, a concrete, just concrete. They Not probably scared of like, you, like oh, like shit. a little little um closet, just concrete floor. No bed, no. No bed. Damn, man. That's what, see, that's see, what we I can go on a, We can go on all night, but, you know, I got I got some people over there, you know. Yeah, no, we ain't going to go too far. Take care of me, get me out of that stuff. Yeah. But, yeah, Tokyo is dope, though. Like, um, the food, the culture, the, the big business is on point. Mm -hmm. The clubs are on point. You know, the city is super clean. The people are like, you know, they have a lot of integrity. You know, mm -hmm. it's a very higher level person in general like yeah you know they have a lot of honor in, in the things that they do even if it's like a small task or like selling like orange chicken or like yeah making like <laughs> little oh, cupcake you, you know what i'm saying whatever they do they put their all into it you know mm -hmm. what i'm saying it's the best fucking cupcake i've ever seen man and taste real, the best <laughs> ingredients you know mm -hmm. the fashion is on point well, shoot, I'm going to have to get with James when he's coming. Shit, we're going to make it work. <laughs> All right, so um, your island um, roots, talk to me. I mean, you're from the Samoas, obviously. And that's and for the people who don't know, that's an American territory, right? No, uh, there is one island that's American. That's territory. the U.S. Samoas, okay? Yeah, So oh, okay. that's it, though. So where you're from is not. And that uh, is kind of fucked up. Yeah? Yeah, more than the other one. Damn. Yeah, the other, yeah. That's like, I, I, 
No shade. I'm mm. just saying, like, facts. Yeah, okay. Well, let's talk about Jamaica specifically. Yeah. Let's talk about Jamaica. Mm-hmm. Okay, so um, what's it like in Jamaica? What are you, How are you received in Jamaica? And, um, like, what's the difference between tourist Jamaica versus the real shit Jamaica? Tourist Jamaica, well, tourist Jamaica is living uh, on a resort with the all inclusive. So yeah. All of your meals are like coming to you on a resort, mm-hmm. you know, and you don't really leave her like little area bubble, mm-hmm. you know, and then like you might like go like, um, like on a kayak or like something, mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, or like float down like the uh, raft on the river. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, <laughs> real beautiful. That's like yeah. tourist, <laughs> you know, and the clubs and stuff. But maybe like you only go to like Margaritaville in like the American know, like, shit, yeah. Mm-hmm. And um, you know, but um, Jamaica is a beautiful place mm-hmm. and uh, a beautiful people, and it's such a beautiful, magical place, like landmass. But what really makes it beautiful is the people, you know, mm-hmm. like the people, the heart and that you feel in, you know, the people, and you know, they've gone through a lot and overcome a lot as people. So there's like a, you know, a, a constant, like a continuous, like, you know, brotherly love that you feel like through like just going through struggles and like with each other and mm-hmm. like, stuff like that. So, yeah. you know, you don't see that. Um, in America. Mm-hmm. Lovely. No, I want to. I definitely want to. And it's funny because it almost sounds a little bit like Miami because you got South Beach and then you got Jamaica? Miami. No, I'm talking. Yeah, Jamaica. Yeah. That was oh, saying. yeah. Oh, uh, no. So I wouldn't say it's like Miami. Though. No, okay. Because yeah, one thing I tell people, because that's like my second home. So I'm like, Miami? Yeah. Most people go to South Beach. So all they see is South uh, Beach. Yeah, I'm like, no, no, no. You cross that town, you go to I little Haiti. Water town, Overtown, I you know, pork and beans. beans. Like it's it's different. And like then you go to the other side, you're like, oh, this is this, this is Miami. Miami. This is what this is what Will Smith sang about, you know, like <laughs> that yeah, type of stuff. But um, all right. So um, other than just the islands, I mean, what would you? And then you got Japan, obviously. What would you say about like just having a huge overseas following? Like, I mean, you sound like you're going on a world tour soon. Mm-hmm. Have you been on a world tour already? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Shy <Shine> moment. <laughs> All right, but yeah, like, how is it like just having a huge overseas following? At the end of the day, ultimately, being a kid from the U.S., kind of. Um, I love people from all different cultures, so I'm always excited to see um, and, uh, and hear and learn about new cultures, and you know, see people connect with people. Mm-hmm. You know, like yeah. That. So to see. Um, them vibing to my music is yeah. a good thing, you know? Hell yeah, beautiful feeling, man. Hell yeah. <laughs> yeah, now your whole shit is a vibe, man. And um, I got one more, uh, another podcast question. This is just some funny shit left field. We always do this stuff. Has anybody ever called you a white Bob Marley? Uh-huh. <laughs> I know it. <laughs> I, I know it. A lot or just something like fucking little kid I've or something? Heard a few times I heard it. Yeah, but that's a fucking hell of a compliment, Bob, man. Yeah. I mean, I, yeah. We're dealing with it in a, in a modern day, but you know, mm-hmm. dealing with it in like 2018. Yeah, you know, uh, he's like, uh, you know, like you you going through like you know war zone, or you are going through the jungle, you going through you know, and, and you're gonna look for people to you know look up to, like who paved the way, right? Or mm-hmm. to like, oh, you know, so Bob Marley's like. As an artist, as a musician, like even just despite the genre mm-hmm. that happens to be the same genre, but just as a person, what he did in the world of music, what he did in the world as a person, what it stood for, like nowadays, it like is a, like the main music in America that kids listen to is hip hop. Yeah, you know, no doubt. I grew up in the island, so I like my music is like coming from like reggae, but. Mm-hmm reggae and hip-hop connect and my music is now influencing hip-hop Shine and the um you know like uh, there's like so much different um 
like demographics even inside of hip hop or, or mm-hmm. like Absolutely. definitions of what hip hop is or like you know mm-hmm. like to like every five years that, that you're gonna ask the people what's hip hop and they're gonna tell you a completely different answer. Simon, that was a great fucking you know? that was dope. Yeah. So like reggae music and hip hop is like really like connected. Mm-hmm. You know? All music is connected but like the most connected like to music is so easy is hip hop and reggae. Yeah. So nowadays hip hop like all they really know is like cars, you know, chains, drugs, drugs, and you know, maybe one more thing, but you know, you get that, you yeah. know, so it's like it's a lot of actual. It's oh, we left out pussy, yeah. I, Sorry, ladies, yeah. Hey, well, hey, they, you know, there ain't nothing wrong with that, yeah. So, you know, we, we all good there. It's just. Like it's like <laughs> it's, it's all yeah. about reggae is all about like coming from like good vibes, you know. Yeah, you got a great fucking vibe, bro. So, so that's really at the end of the day, like what anything that I do as far as any, anything musically, mm-hmm. that's what I will aspire to do is bring good vibes. You know, yeah. You don't need to get any more complicated. You know? Yeah, like, not nah, man. It's just a vibe. The vibe is real. I mean, that's clearly how the music is, but even you as a person, that's the vibe is real. You know what I'm saying? But um, one more Marley question. What's your favorite Bob Marley song? If you got Man. one. Well, like, of course, I love, um, one of my favorites is uh, Waiting in Vain, and I also like uh, Trench, Trench Down Rock. Okay. Yeah. See, maybe maybe the ones I like is too. Maybe the ones I like is too commercial. Because yeah, maybe. My my favorite shit is fucking is this love. <laughs> is this love? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know what uh, I'm saying? But that I I literally get up and just play a full Bob Marley album and just. I mean, maybe it's because I'm a stoner. I don't know. But literally, I'll just literally play it like just to get crazy, the vibe man. right. You know what hey, I'm saying? Like hey, their production is is crazy. Man, back in the day, man. Yeah. What happened to the Wellers, man? They they going. Okay. They going. They, yeah, they on the right now. Okay. See, we gotta sit down and just kick it, smoke one, run a little album. But um, and then as far as you, uh, what's what you got upcoming as far as you're running the United States? You're in Phoenix, Arizona right now, mm-hmm. eating the best carne asada. What you got coming next? <laughs> I, well, oh, I'm vegetarian, so. Okay. Well, I you're smelling some, the best carne asada. Yeah, yeah, I had some in hell. food today at uh from a place called uh, Good. Cool vibes. Shime on me. So shout out to Cool Vibes. Yeah, we'll send them this clip. They'll be happy. So, um, what, what was your, what's your question about? I don't even remember. Oh, oh. <laughs> 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 like, we don't fact check. I don't remember what. The... <laughs> what was my question? Talking about uh, music. How good is the? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it just it just gets the vibe right, man. Bob Marley. But no, I was asking you. Oh, what I asked you about your upcoming run in the United States. Because you're in Phoenix right now, you living in LA. Are you going to do a tour in the United States? Are you just trying to grow your brand in the continental US? What are you doing right now as far as that? Um, we just got done with the album, so we're about to drop like music now coming mm-hmm. up like in the next couple of weeks. We shoot actually we're here shooting a video maybe like in a week okay. for the first single. So like we'll be dropping music. Stay tuned, like follow me on Instagram, yeah, couple music. Mm-hmm. Um, we'll let you know when we're dropping. It's coming in like two weeks, and we got like we got so much music. We just been you know getting all the music done. So when we start tour, like we don't have to like worry about yeah, hell yeah. I want to master. Let music. me know when the video is. I come through and Diddy Bob just come through and say take that and leave. We gonna do something here. Um, there's an artist, um, popular artist um, from Kingston called Future Fambo. Mm-hmm. Have you heard of him? Nah, he's out here though? No, he's he's in uh, Jamaica. He's my, my bro. He's like okay. my, my best friend. I want to check yeah. him out. Shit, hell and yeah. He, uh, he has a song called uh, Rum and Red Bull. That's a big tune. Mm-hmm. Um, with Beanie Man. And he got a song out with Gucci Man right now. Shine called on. Uh, How We Living. Mm-hmm. And then we just did a song together. Well, he, he featured on my song. Mm-hmm. Something that we're just going to drop. Like, yeah man let me know man phoenix is a great place to have a show i mean obviously you got to promote it right and you know do your due diligence but 
you can turn some shit out out here, man. And like I said, it's it's hidden a little bit. Or I wouldn't say hidden, but you're not just going to see it by walking around. But there's a huge reggae and Jamaican scene in Phoenix. Well, I had a really good friend. Um, he's passed away now, but who was Jamaican. And he, I used to have the best time with this dude. His name was Reggie. But um, shout out to you, man. I've been having a great fucking time with you. Your vibe is ill. We definitely got to smoke some weed. We got a lot of shit to do while you're still here. But uh. I want you to give some shout outs to anybody that might have helped you along your journey and anything you want to talk about, you can talk about right now. You got the floor. Well, I'll give a shout out to everyone that's um, been helping me along the journey. You know, shout out to Invest. Um, shout out to Island Empire, Chaz Rocks, Paul Napoleon, my bro Black, Louis, Jack. Um, thank you, everybody. All these beautiful ladies out here for coming out. Yeah, man, y'all spoiled us. I don't even want to say it. I would have been more nervous if I didn't have to be doing this. <laughs> uh, yeah, and thank, thank you guys. You know, um, thank, thank God for this, the, you know, yes, the life and, um, you know. Nah, man, the vibe is ill. The vibe is real. I ain't got nothing else to rhyme with that, so we got to be out of here, man. Pops right. on radio. Shout out to you. Shout out to Invest once again. Shout out to James, man. He's a cool fucking dude. We're going to go out and uh, tear the streets up. Yes, Pod Sun Radio, we out this thing, man. Let's go. In the live. Yeah, we good, man. Nice. Okay. You know what I mean? Tap right in the